Hey, what's up? Pete's Loving Nerd here. You guys already know how much I like Pine64 products. I've made so many videos on them. So, I got another one to show off today. This is Pine64's new single board computer, the Core 64, and I am very ex excited about this. Alright. So, keep in mind Pine64 did send this to me. This is an 8 gig model right here. And I already opened this box to show my parents what was inside of it. And then I repackaged it. So here it is. It's not gonna look this unorganized. That was me throwing everything back in the box. But we have a 32 gig EMMC right here. We have a USB adapter for the EMMC module. Um, what's this? We have what looks like to be a heatsink, and we have the board itself right here. So here it is. It's a little bit bigger than something like a Raspberry Pi. Uh, here's a Pi 3 just because my Pi 4 is in a case. So it is quite a bit bigger than the Pi 3 is right here. However, they do have plans for a Model B, which should be around the same size as a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. So, yeah. Okay, now that we got the unboxing out of the way, let's talk about the device itself. And yes, I'm wearing a different shirt. My recording for the second part of this video got messed up. <laughs> Anyways, in terms of I.O., there's a ton of stuff on this board. Right here, we got uh, three USB 2.0s and one USB 3.0. We got a headphone jack right here, HDMI, one gigabit ethernet. We got an AC-DC power uh, port right here. And there's loads of extra stuff. For example, there's an e-ink display interface. There's a camera interface. There are a lot of other ports on this SBC too that you can take advantage of. In terms of size, uh, it's quite a bit bigger than here's a Raspberry Pi 3 right here because uh, my four is in a case. Anyways, here's a Raspberry Pi 3 for size comparison. It is quite a bit bigger, and you're probably waiting for the juicy part of the video, so let's go to performance. In terms of performance, the RK3566 is almost as powerful as a Raspberry Pi 4. Now, keep in mind, this was tested on an experimental build of Android, so keep that in mind. However, this SoC can run a lot cooler than something like the Raspberry Pi 4 can. Personally, I have a lot of cooling on my Pi 4. This entire case is made of metal, and there's a heatsink and two fans. Now, this might be a little bit overkill, but the fact that it might even need that much good cooling kind of shows how hot the Raspberry Pi 4 can get, because I've always had heating issues with Raspberry Pis. You won't be experiencing that type of heating issue with something like the Quartz 64, and that to me is a plus over the Raspberry Pi. Now, in terms of what you can run on this, this is still very early in development. In fact, the Pine64 website even tells you not to get it unless you're an early adopter. So at the time this video is being out, really the only Linux distro that this supports is Manjaro and it still doesn't have full display out yet. But this can run Android and I just wanted to run some Android stuff just to see how well this can perform for say retro gaming. We're kinda, we're kinda gonna push the test of the SoC but in terms of mainline Linux, that is still being worked on and I don't really have anything to show off yet. But for reasons I'm going to talk about later in this video, I am going to be paying a lot of attention to the Quartz 64 line of devices. And so stay tuned for that. So let's do a quick cut over to me testing out Android on this. So now we are in Android and I decided to do a few games just to test out, you know, the performance on this thing. Now, do keep in mind, take these performance results with a grain of salt. This is a development build of Android developed by Rockchip for this SoC, and I don't think it's going to be maintained very long. I think it's really just going to be, you know, Linux distros and everything off the mainline kernel when this SoC gets support from the Linux kernel. On top of that, I don't know how good the GPU drivers are in this build of Android, so the GPU performance may be way better than what's shown off here. The first test I did was put on a video in both 1080p and 4K, and 1080p 60fps was pretty impressive because it didn't drop a single frame while I was testing, and by the way, the stats for nerds thing, those were drop frames before I turned on stats for nerds. 
So 1080p60 through the YouTube app on Android worked great. But what was even more impressive is that when I ran 4K 60fps, there still wasn't any drop frames. That's right, the Quartz 64 was able to play back YouTube at 4K 60fps on Android. Now that was being downscaled to, I think, less than 1080p or even less than 720p, but still doesn't it take even more processing power to render in 4K and then downscale it? Now, I was a little bit less impressed with Super Tux Cart on Android. I didn't really know what to expect with this because the only other time I've used Super Tux Cart to test something was my Nokia 6.1 Android phone from a while ago. So I went into settings, cranked it up to the max graphics, and it ran like garbage, like I'm talking 6 or 7 FPS slideshow territory. However, when I changed the graphics down to be medium settings at 3, that ran at a constant 20 to 30 FPS, usually in the 25 range, which was perfectly playable. And I bet if you set the graphics to the lowest, which would be 1, it would run even better. So Super Tux Cart is kind of playable on the Court 64 if you tone down the graphics. So that was the performance on Android, and I was pretty impressed considering how cool it stayed during those two tests I did. You could easily use this device without a heatsink with no problems whatsoever. And yes, I'm wearing another shirt. So while it isn't that impressive of a device yet, considering it can only run a development version of Android and the mainline Linux kernel can't even do display output yet, you should be paying attention to this device and the progress it makes because of what this device means for the future of Pine64. Lucas stated in the February community update for Pine64 that this will be used as a developer kit for the next line of non-pro Pine64 devices. This means we could potentially see a Pine phone, a Pine tab, a Pine book, all based on this SoC right here. And this is leagues more powerful than the chip used in the A64 single board computer that is the basis for the Pine phone and the Pine tab and the OG Pine book. So the way I see it, the more that this progresses, the closer we get to a new Pine phone with updated hardware. In fact, Pine64 is already producing a new device based on this hardware with its new Pine Note e-ink tablet. This to me is the beginning of the next generation of Pine64. So in my opinion, Anyone who's interested in any of Pine64's non-SPCs, including their consumer hardware, should be interested in this too, because this is what's going to allow these new devices to even be created in the first place. Which is why I am going to be paying attention to this and making a lot more videos on the Court 64, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be awesome to see what the future holds with this thing. So that's the video. Thanks to my patrons, Mitchell Vantino, Sam Covet, Frank, Jan Sass, sorry, that's a new name and I haven't pronounced it yet before, <laughs> Jim Peter, and Marius Scripsgard for donating five or more dollars a month. Also, thanks to Pine64 for sending me this device to review. If you're interested, I'm going to be doing quite a few more videos on this, so stay tuned. And that's the video.